My name is Kristen Sellier. I am the founder of ID8. We are a branding agency, and I'm really happy to be talking to you today about rethinking events. The events in 2020 have changed so much. Well, I should say the lack of events. We just haven't been able to see people. And what's really important right now is that you stay safe and stay with your families. But we all have businesses as well. And so what do you do now that your sales process included events, you just can't have the events. How do you meet people? How do you network? How do you close business deals without being able to shake hands, have lunch together, have coffee? What is it for, what can you do now? What I'm here to share with you today is how you can have a successful event in a digital format versus the old school trade show method. This morning I was in a meeting and the client said to me they had 54 trade shows scheduled this year. And the reason businesses attend trade shows is because they're looking to meet prospects. And so what other marketing avenue can clients go down to be able to replenish that pipeline of 54 trade shows? So businesses have to be nimble and adapt to new situations. And we're really fortunate that we have the ability to connect with people in a digital way. So what I'm gonna give you today are three tips on how to create a successful digital event. Number one, your audience. For any event that you have, you have to understand who you're trying to reach. Your event won't be successful if you're open to meeting anyone, if you don't really have a specific goal in mind, if you don't have specific objectives. So really define your customer. Now think about your business. You're gonna have different types of customers that you work with and customer one, they may be the most profitable companies that you work with and they may be a very high revenue company. You may deal directly with the controller in that company. Customer type number two, this may be a business owner and they have revenues of 1 million to 2 million and their problems are more with operational efficiencies. And then you may be able to define another customer type. What we do at ID8 is we create customer personas and those customer personas define each customer, even with a name. So when your marketing team or your company as a whole is creating events, they're creating events for a person. And some companies even name them like Darla. Darla could be the name of one of their customers and this person drives a minivan. So if you think about Darla and she drives a minivan, does, do any of you think she's 20 to 30 years old? Any of you think she's 50 to 75 years old? How about is she 30 to 40 years old? Yes, she is. And what do you think? Do you think she has kids? Do you think her kids play sports? Yes. So you can really clearly define a customer by four words. Darla drives a minivan. So your customer needs to be defined very clearly so that you can create a message that's gonna resonate with this Darla. And then you can also communicate with her in a place where she's gonna be and she's gonna to listen to your message. So step number one, target. Understand your audience, understand who you wanna reach and clearly define each of the audience types because that's going to make the strength of the event even stronger. Step number two is to move on to your message. So this is, hey, your customer has a problem. They have an issue. And your customer doesn't really care about what you do. They don't get excited about that. What they really get excited about is when you can talk about how you can help them. So they have an issue or a problem or a need. What those customers really wanna know is how you can help them solve their problem. So the message you define is based on your client has a problem and this is the benefit that you provide to help fix that problem. So if Darla is driving a minivan and her problem is that her car breaks down, that's her pain point. She doesn't have a reliable way to get to the store. So some solution could be for AAA that she has 45 minutes to make a phone, she makes a phone call and in 45 minutes someone comes and picks her up gets her car to the place it needs to be. But Darla in the minivan has that problem. So if the AAA is only talking about, 
hey, we can pick you up anytime. They're not talking specifically to Darla's problem. She might not be engaged in the event. Make sense? So really have a message that addresses the pain point of the customer and then how you're going to help them with that. And so this is the theme, this is the topic of the event itself. Make sure that the topic that you have is valuable information for them. So if you're able to go online and search and you find 25 pages of content about this topic, it's probably not very valuable to them. It should be educational. The customer, like Darla, that you're looking for, what does she want to learn about? And it should be rare. It should be information that you can't find everywhere. So make sure when you hit that theme that you're talking about something educational, unique, valuable, and rare. All right, so now you've got your target audience and you've got your theme of the event. Now you've got to figure out how you're going to tell your story to people. And so these are the channels, the places that you're going to get customers to come to your event. So let's go back to Darla. We know Darla drives a minivan. We know she's 30 to 40 years old. And guess how much time women spend on Facebook every day in that age range? 86 minutes a day they're on Facebook. And this is a trend upwards from three years ago. It's almost 20% more now than it was then. So if you want to reach Darla and she's on Facebook for 86 minutes a day, that's more than an hour. You can use Facebook, use an ad and put that ad out there and you're more likely to reach her than you would by putting an ad in the newspaper. All right. So that's one way to reach a person. Now, if you've got a prospect, someone you've never worked with before, you can also use Facebook and Instagram, but because you don't know them and they may not follow you or like you, you're going to want to send them an advertisement. So this is a promotion. You can promote posts and you can do that on Facebook. You can do it on Facebook stories. You can do it on Instagram and you can do it on Instagram stories. Those are great platforms to get your message out there about your event so that you can attract those new prospects who've never, never heard of you before. So you want to use this platform to raise visibility about about your brand. People may not know that you exist. So you can use the ads to build brand awareness so that they know that that company is around the corner. Number two, kind of how you want to tell people is these are people you've already worked with. So you can use email because you already have an email list, a database of clients that you've worked with, and you can send emails out to your current clients and let them know about the event. There's usually a, a, a success rate of opening for emails is over 25%. So if you send out 100 emails, you're likely to get 25 people to open that email. That's great visibility for you when you're going to have an event. And you can also use Facebook and Instagram for that event for your current customers. Now they may already be a follower and may already like your business. Um, so they may see an organic post. So you can definitely put just a post out there and let them know about the event. And then they also may see it more often if you're also promoting the event because they fall within your guidelines of your target group. Now that you've got all of that done, you've create, determined your customer, you've determined what the message is, what the theme is, what the topic is, and now you're getting the message out there and you've attracted all these people to your event. Then you can have an event with people attending your event who are interested in what you have. They're your ideal customer and they're going to be poised and ready to buy from you after they attend that event. I wish you the best of luck with your digital events in 2020 and beyond. Thank you.